I know how my whole family will die. I know that's not something you would typically hear out of a 13-year-old female. However, I've been having these dreams for years. Now, I'm a lucid dreamer, so some could say it's just my imagination, but I don't think so. I grew up in a big city, but would always go to the coast where some of my family lived for summer vacation. A couple of days before school let out, I had one of these dreams for the first time. My grandpa was in the hospital and he suddenly fell to the floor checking in. I kept hearing this voice in my head saying, walk to him, help him up. I listened to this and moved towards my grandpa, who was now slowly rising from his own body. I then woke up to a loud buzzing in my ear. I had this dream a few more times, not thinking much of it as I don't dream very often. In the summer of 2017, I went on my usual vacation. Everything seemed fine the first day. I was hanging out with my cousins and my grandma had her back surgery the next day. However, when I went to bed that night, I had that specific dream. Only this time the ending changed. Instead of my grandpa rising from his body, he was screaming and the doctors rushed to him, pushing me out of the way. I then woke up to a loud pounding sound. At first I thought a picture frame had fallen, but when I looked around the room, everything seemed to be in place. I went out into the hallway to look. All of a sudden there was more pounding sounds. I wandered into the kitchen to see if that was where the pounding was coming from, only to meet my two older brothers standing there, whispering amongst themselves. I was pretty startled by them as they caught me by surprise. It was seven in the morning, and they usually don't wake up until ten. I asked them if they had heard the pounding too. They hadn't. Now that I knew this pounding was only in my head, I told them about my dream. They were confused, but they said something shocking. My parents left to go to the hospital hours prior. It was my grandpa, a code blue. Come to find out, my grandpa had died due to a heart attack waiting for my grandma to get out of surgery. I also had a few more dreams where I predicted my other grandpa dying of cancer, right as he was told he was cancer-free. Recently, I've been having dreams about my parents. Two dreams, specifically. The first one was just of my mom. She was kayaking on a lake that we usually go to on vacation. Her kayak flipped over, and she drowned. However, since I moved to the coast last year, my dreams have changed. My parents would always be in the car with my younger sister, and they'd get into a huge four-car crash with eight fatalities, three of them being my family. I'll save the details for next time. For now, let's hope not all dreams come true. My name is Vicente. This happened to me when a few months ago, and I am currently 25. I was born in a small town in the jungle in Colombia. My mom and dad were very proud to be 100% Colombian. I only spoke Spanish until I became a fluent English speaker when I was in college because I recently attended an exchange program in Canada. I met my wife on the trip. Her name is Akardi, and she came from Osaka, Japan. When we both finished college, we moved to my old village in Colombia. Akardi works a job at home and I work as an electrician. I was called to work on a power outage at an old office building. It was always sort of normal for power outages in our area because we live in the middle of the jungle. So I drove to the location and I got to work. The weird thing was that the building was 20 miles from our village. I mean there was an office building isolated in the jungle. Usually I only get calls within one to two minutes away. When I was trying to fix the wires, there was something very creepy in my opinion. I noticed wires that were just ripped open in a way that it looked like someone or something bit out of it. I assumed it was some animal from the jungle since there was a massive hole in the wall. 
the power came back on, so I went to my truck and I started to drive back when I got a call from my wife. Hey babe, I headed to the market, so I'll be gone for a few minutes when you get home, said Accardi. Okay, I'm about 12 minutes away. Love you. Adios, I said. I got startled by a random pop sound on my way home, so I pulled over to the right near a palm tree. It was about 10 p.m., so it was pretty dark out. I got out, and to my shock, instead of a pop tire, it was completely gone. Then I was scared when I found that my spare tire was completely torn to shreds. I called my wife and told her to come pick me up in her car. I suddenly heard a whistling sound come from right next to me. But when I looked to the left, nothing was there. My mom always told me to beware of El Silbon, which means the whistler in Spanish. It was a Colombian urban legend of a man who killed his father and fed the meat to his family. When his grandfather found out, he hired a witch to curse him. When El Silbon was starved to death, his spirit, a tall man wearing a tank top and overalls with a large farmer's hat, roamed the jungle with a bag of bones. They say when he sounds very close, he is far. And when he is close, he sounds far. I kept on hearing the whistling right in my ear, but I still was freaked out by this in the dark jungle. I was all alone in the jungle. I wish that was true, but I wasn't alone. The whistle started sounding a little bit more quiet by the minute. By the time it was almost gone, I was relieved to see headlights up ahead. I started walking towards it thinking that was a cardi, but instead I saw a man with an old farmer outfit carrying a bag just staring with his yellow, glowing eyes. I froze in fear as he started charging at me. Then I heard an engine coming close, and so did the mysterious man. I was shocked to see him not run, but disappear into the thin air. Acardi pulled up, and we both were scared when we heard a woman screeching. Get in, Vicente. I ran into the car and saw the man stare at us. When we got home, Acardi and I got in the bed, and she kissed me, and we went to sleep. Her back was facing me, and she asked if I knew what the woman was screaming for. I nodded my head and then realized she couldn't see me, and I said yes and explained the story about the man that I encountered. She immediately turned over, facing me with a pale face full of fear. My wife had always worried about me, and I loved that about her, but I didn't think she would have believed that this man or thing could just disappear. To my shock, she did. I saw that man first a week ago when I was taking a night walk. I saw him suffocate a man and throw him into a bag while whistling. She fell asleep hugging me. I normally wouldn't fall asleep in that position, but I felt safer that night for some reason. I still wonder what would have happened if Acardi didn't arrive at the time that she did. Would I have ended up in the bag like the other man did? 